All right, everybody, welcome to another edition of the Sales Vitamin Podcast, where every edition is a helpful vitamin for your sales professional development. And we have got an outstanding guest today, Stacy Brown Randall. She is the author of Generating Business Referrals Without Asking. That is the key, without asking. And she's also got a great podcast, A Roadmap to Grow Your Business. That's her podcast. And she's a national speaker. I'm excited to have her on today because we're going to talk about referrals. And that's a topic that uh, doesn't get talked about a whole lot, but is very, very important. So Stacy, thank you for coming on today. I'm excited. Well, thank you, John, for having me. I'm excited to be here. So high level, let's, let's tell the listeners, where did you get this epiphany that we need referrals? And uh, I know your background because I've, I've studied it a little bit, but tell, tell the listeners how you came about this and how, why this book and why this, uh, this niche? You know, it's interesting. I really wish I could just tell you that I woke up one day and God was like, here's your stroke of brilliance, Stacy. Like, you're going to teach the people how to generate referrals without asking. And it just came to me, right? I mean, I wish that would be the story because that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Like, yeah, I just woke up one day and decided this is how you do it. But unfortunately, like all the good things in life, it was learned through the school of hard knocks. So I actually had a first business. It was a human resource consulting firm. And my HR consulting firm would, it was a, we had it for about just over four years. It didn't quite make it to the five year mark before it actually ultimately failed. And what's interesting is, is if you were on the outside looking in at that business, you would have been like, wow, Stacy, you've got KPMG and BDO and Ally Bank as your clients. Like you must be doing so well. But the truth was for the four plus years that I ran that business, it had a secret. And the secret was, is that I worked entirely too hard for each client I did land because I never received a single referral and which meant I was always hustling for the next piece of business. I was always riding that roller coaster of feast or fame and highs and lows. Like you get a client, you put your head down, you do the work, you look up, you're like, oh my gosh, wait, there's no more work. There's no more clients. The prospecting pipeline, that prospecting funnel was always empty yeah. and I was constantly having to fill it. And so when my business failed and I found myself back at corporate America, I started paying attention to not only what did I do wrong, but other people are better at this, being business owners, like what could I learn from them? And I started paying attention to the way I, I wanted to grow my business. And the other kind of parallel story that was happening in my life at the same time is, is I'm a mom of three kids. So when I started that HR consulting firm, you know, I believe Jacob, he's my oldest son. He was like four months old. Right. So it was like, it's not like I've ever run a business not having babies around. So for me, right. I mean, he's now 12, but like I was starting that business and he really, when I think about it, it was like, I have us having, you know, Jacob as a baby. And then two years later, along came his sister. And then a couple of years later, we took custody of our nephew, who's actually our oldest now. He's 13. His name's Danny. And so I had, you know, Danny, we took custody of him at seven, but so I had Danny and Jacob and McKenzie. So networking every night of the week, I mean, eating every, every night as a rubber chicken dinner at some networking yeah. event or grabbing coffees every morning when the kids actually needed to be getting to school on time. Like those were things that just compounded my life. And so when I went back to corporate America, decided to start again and start a second business, I started a productivity and business coaching practice. And I got certified as a productivity coach and I started coaching folks on just how to be you know, like more productive. It's kind of one of my other superpowers. Yeah. And so I started coaching on that and it was great, but I realized I don't want to network every day of the week. I've got these kids. And then we added a third, right? When we added our nephew, I was like, I've got to figure out a better way to grow. So in that first year, I just was like guinea pigging on my own business. of like, how can I grow? Well, obviously I knew referrals was something that I wanted, but I thought like everybody else, you either had to ask for them. And if you didn't want to ask for them, cause that was awkward and uncomfortable, then you just had to wait for them magically to show up because somebody decided they loved you and you did a really good job. And so you're put in this position of ask for them or wait and hope. Like those are the strategies that we're taught. Right. And so for me, it was like, okay, if I don't want to ask and I don't want to pay for them and I don't want to sit around and wait and hope, like, what am I going to do? And so I started to pay attention behind, can I reverse engineer a lot of stuff. It's kind of sometimes how I end up with how I teach things and how I understand things. But right. I started paying attention as to why referrals happen. So I started doing things in my own business when I was a, a productivity and business coach. I started doing things in my own business and I started getting referrals. And in my first year as a business coach, I received 112 referrals that I did not ask for. 
And there was more people than I could work with in a year. And so it was like this massive like eye opener. Oh, wait, I can get referrals and I can do it without asking. And then as my clients who I was coaching were typically sales professionals and small business owners, as I was teaching them my productivity business stuff, right? They were like, how are you growing so fast? And I'm like, oh, I'm getting referrals. And they're like, yeah, thanks for the inbox like the rules on how to manage my inbox, I'd rather learn your referral piece. So I kind of yeah. shifted and I started teaching them how to generate referrals without asking, just following the process that worked for me. And ultimately that helped me refine it. I mean, I've been doing this eight years now, but yeah. ultimately that helped me refine it down to a place where I'm like, oh, it's some steps. And these are the steps I do. And these are the, the founding principles on which I operate from. And this is what makes it work. And this is the language that I use. So all these pieces kind of came together as I started teaching it to them. Now, of course, right? I mean, we have a very, very clearly defined roadmap that people follow of exactly what this looks like. We're, I mean, we've got business owners and sales professionals in 10 different countries all around the world who are participating in this strategy and model. It's called growth by referrals. But the idea was it came from a place of, I failed at business and I didn't want to fail again. And I right. wanted to be successful. And what I learned was how to make my business successful and then realized that's actually what other people wanted to know and started teaching them. And of course that was eight years ago and we are fully focused on making sure people understand that there is another way, another option to get referrals. If you don't want to ask for them, if you don't want to pay for them, if you don't want to be really promotional and gimmicky, and if you don't just want to wait around and hope that they happen. Yeah. And, and from a referral standpoint, are, is your system, the system that you use, is it industry specific or does this work for any, any B2B, B2C or, cause I know looking at your website, you've worked with all different types of industries, but so your, your program obviously isn't just, well, it's only good for B2B. What, it's good for everything, right? Yeah. So here's the thing. I think the word everything is a little uh, misleading in terms of it'll work for everybody. That's right, actually right. right. Like it definitely works for um, a large number of industries. B2B or B2C is actually irrelevant. Um, what it, Where it works the best though, is when you're in an industry where you have to build relationships with right. your prospects and with your clients. So where I would not deploy my strategy is in a SaaS based company. Right. Like, Uber, right? Or something yeah. like, um, you know, VRBO, right? Where right. I don't need, I can read reviews to decide that I want to stay at somebody's apartment for rent versus having to have a relationship with that person to make the decision to right. purchase or not. So, you know, so a lot of like technology based companies or SaaS based companies or highly transactional companies, right? right? Like the fact that you never talk to your people again after you do whatever you do, sell them a pair of shoes or whatever it is, if you never talk to them again, then it's th this strategy isn't probably the best deployed, but that means and if you're in an industry where you are looking at it from that perspective of building relationships, you want, you want your clients to come by referral. You're, you're able to build relationships with people who can refer you, whether that's clients or centers of influence. If you're in a relationship building space, then this will definitely work as long as you're willing to put in the work to it to see right. that it happens. So yeah, whereas technically it does work for a lot of different industries, right. it's not like it works for every single one. I don't do this. I, I say, I tell folks, I don't really do this in the online space. I don't do it in yeah. the medical space and I don't do it for highly transactional or technology based companies, but everybody else, this is, this is kind of where it works. Yeah, that makes sense. And my, my background's all uh, B2B in the transportation, long sales cycles, a high dollar uh, value. So the relationship's key and you're dealing with maybe multiple decision makers, a C-level. Um, how do you define a referral? Uh, because I guess that can be a, oh yeah, I was referred by him. Well, yeah, he just told you about what separates where, where you define a referral versus what the industry says is a referral. Yeah, that's such a good key question because we all define it differently because unfortunately we take different sales terms and we use them interchangeably with referral, which means we've actually just diluted its overall definition and the power that it ultimately has. So how I define referral starts with first and foremost as to why we want them. So, you know, when you think about, you're having a conversation with someone and you're like, Hey John, why do you want a referral? Typically, as you know, that response, that answer is going to be, well, because they're easier to close, they're quicker to close, they're less price sensitive, and all that happens because they've come to me through someone they trust, and that trust has then been transferred to me. 
So ultimately, a referred prospect shows up different from a cold prospect, right, who happened to answer the phone when you happen to make a cold call, right, or you happen to send a cold email and they answered it. The ultimate, when you think about that, right, that sales cycle looks entirely different when you got to warm them up versus a referral who shows up, hey, I know what you do. I know how you've helped so-and-so, or I know someone speaks highly of you, so I'm trusting you. Here's my problem. Can you solve it? Like the whole conversation is different and the, the pace of them becoming a client is different. And so, okay, if we think about that, that's why we want them. Quicker to close, easier to close, less price sensitive, already trust us because someone referred them to us that they trust. Then it only makes sense that the two parts that have we define a referral are personal connection, which means they have to be connected to you by someone they trust who we call the referral source, right? So the prospect has to be connected to you by the referral source right. because that's where the trust between the prospect and the referral source is then transferred to you as the solution provider. And so there has to be a personal connection. So lots of times people will say, oh my gosh, I got a word of mouth referral. And I'm always like, that's not a thing. <laughs> Those are actually two totally different things. Yeah. It's word of mouth fuzz. I was talking about you. I told someone about you. They're going to follow up. Maybe fingers crossed, hopefully they'll remember is right. actually the case, right? Yeah. Versus I was talking about you, John, and I just connected you to the person I was talking about and now they need to hire you or work with you, right? So big difference in terms yeah. of word of mouth buzz is I'm talking about you. I'm telling people to hire you, but you don't know who those people are because I'm just talking to, to them and I'm not telling you about it because I'm not making the connection to them. Yeah. So personal connection is number one. Number two is there's got to be a need identified. When you're connected to somebody, we all need to know who the prospect is. And the prospect needs to know they are the prospect. Right. Right. So it's got to be that need identified. I'm being connected to you because I have this specific need. And that's why I'm willing to talk to you because this person I trust, the referral source, said I should talk to you to solve my problem. Yeah. So the need has to be identified. I have lots of people who reach out to me and they'll be like, I got this great referral. I can't figure out why we can't get it closed. And I'm like, tell me about it. And they'll be like, well, we got connected, right? We were connected over email and they said that we should know each other. I'm like, no, what you got was an introduction. Right. Which is not a referral. Sometimes an introduction is a referral in hiding because they mean for someone to be the prospect, but if the referral source doesn't state what the need is, and that is why you're being connected to the prospect, then nobody knows who the prospect is, and it just becomes another introduction, just another opportunity maybe to grow your network. And sometimes introductions are just that. They are just, let's grow my network, right? I'm going to be introduced to somebody that I'm going to get to know, and that maybe down the road one day they'll refer me, or they'll be able to help me, or I'll be able to help them or refer them. But what we're looking for are referrals. Right. So we have to be able to identify what word of mouth buzz is versus an introduction versus how those two are different from ultimately a referral. And a referral has got to have personal connection and need identified. Okay. So those two things, the personal connection and the need, because um, I know over my career, I've, I've said, oh, well, that was a referral. And all it was, was a, like you were just talking about, you know, a word of mouth kind of a connection. <laughs> Where in the sales process is this best to happen? So, or is it kind of all the way through the sales process that you're looking for the opportunity for, to get a referral or when you ask for a referral, where in the sales, is it the beginning? Is it kind of the middle? Is it the end? Where do you uh, advise your, your clients? Hey, this is where you really need to, to focus on the referral process. Yeah. So it's interesting. So the way you just described that is kind of what I would call like old school sales cycle when we're right. applying it to the concept of referrals, because you were like, Hey, we're in the process. Do we ask for a referral? And what I always tell folks is you never actually ask. Okay. You never ask for a referral. And so, and the real, and some people will teach you, Hey, if you're talking to a prospect and they say no, then you ask them, well, if you, you can't work with me, but who else do you know who can work with me? That's like the worst thing ever. Because they just said no to you. It doesn't mean they don't know other people, but now you've made it about you. Right. And that's the fundamental, that's the fundamental piece that people miss about referrals is we think referrals are about us because we get a new client easier. But yeah. the reality of it is when I refer someone to you, it isn't because I wake up and think, how can I help John grow his business today? How can I help him increase his book of business? I, yeah. Nobody actually wakes up thinking of that, that about <laughs> I anybody I wish they else, did. <laughs> right? I know that would be amazing. I wish people would just wake up every day and be like, how can I help Stacy grow her business today? I'm yeah. the only one who wakes up thinking, how can I grow my business today? Right? Just like yeah. you are. You're the only one who wakes up thinking about you because yeah. we all wake up thinking about ourselves. And so we think when we receive a referral, people are doing us a favor. And they're doing it for us. They're not. 
They're doing it to help the prospect who they know and probably right. care about that has a problem and they want to help them find the solution because when the, when a referral source connects a prospect to you, they become the hero. Yeah. And so ultimately there it's that sense of I'm helping someone, right? I mean, I think it's been written somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where I read this one time that the word help is actually the most powerful language, the most powerful word in the English English language. So it's like, I'm helping you. And that makes me feel good about myself. That's how we were built and designed, right? Is to help other people. I mean, some people are dead inside and they're only looking to help themselves, but right. most of us are actually interested in helping other people. That's why referrals happen. So when we think about our sales strategy, right? And we think about this overarching, like where do I put referrals and where do I put my focus on referrals when I'm thinking about my sales strategy? I always tell folks, I was like, stop thinking about the traditional advice about when am I gonna ask for them? How am I gonna get them? When am I gonna make sure that people understand who the best referral is for me? Those are all the wrong questions because they're focused on you. Yeah. Like they're focused on making life easier for you. If you look at your sales strategy, like a three legged stool versus a two legged stool, which is how it's typically taught, you'll be able to think and see referrals differently. So what I mean by a three legged stool versus a two legged stool is most people teach sales strategy. If you go through any type of like sales training, read sales books, look at articles online, they teach sales. Like it's, it's the sales strategy is taught where there's the prospecting side. Right. The cold calling, the cold emailing, the networking, the leads groups, the 7 million cups of coffee that we now all do virtual, right? Right. And the other side, the other leg to the stool is marketing. It's the website, the thought leadership, the social media, the advertising, the earned PR, right? So it's this concept of you've got prospecting activities you do and you've got marketing activities you do. And we typically teach sales in that way. And that's good. Right. We all need to, those two legs. Right. The problem is, is that the, your stool is missing a third leg. And the third leg that it's missing is the referral leg. You yeah. have to pull your referral process and your mentality around referrals out of prospecting and out of marketing. And you have to think about it differently. And this is the best way for me to describe why behind this. When I'm in prospecting mode and I'm going to a networking event or I'm making a cold call, which those two things I rarely do anymore. But when I used to do those things back right. in the day, right? I would go hoping to find somebody who would want to have a conversation with me about hiring me, about working with me. Right. When you send 50 cold emails, that's what you're hoping. Someone's going to open it and respond back and be like, Hey, let's have a conversation. Maybe I need what you do. Right. Yeah. The, the end user of our prospecting activities and our messaging is the prospect in marketing. The end user of our marketing activities, landing on our website, seeing our Facebook ads, seeing our billboard, right. Seeing us at a trade show with the booth, whatever it is, the end user of that marketing activity is the prospect. Yeah. So it makes sense that the language we use and the activities we do fit the prospect need, right? Prospect, yeah. the marketing and the prospecting. Okay. But the other side of that is it's referrals. Well, who's the end user of the message when it comes to referrals? It's not right. the prospect because you don't know who the prospect is. The end user of any activities you do around referrals is the referral source, the person who knows the prospect. So everything you do looks different. There's no more sales language, right? There's no more yeah. trying to make sure that you understand like all the pieces of my business and how it works because I'm not selling you. What I'm doing is I'm strengthening a relationship with you and I'm building trust with you and I'm trying to stay top of mind with you, not just keep in touch, but top of mind with you right. in a memorable and a meaningful way where I've endeared you to me that because you know, I care about you because you take care of my business by sending me referrals. So our referral leg is totally different from prospecting and marketing. And okay. I believe you need all three legs. Every business needs a fully functioning stool that sits flat on the ground and doesn't yeah. rock, right? So I believe you need prospecting and marketing, but when you decide you wanna do referrals, you've gotta pull your referrals out of prospecting, out of marketing, create a new leg to your stool, and then do everything different that you yeah. would normally think about doing. So what can someone expect, your customer, uh, your customer, if someone is to to say, "Hey, Stacy, that really sounds good. I do it." What is your? What can they expect from your program? Uh, this isn't a quick hit or quick fix. I, I don't believe it's. Oh, yeah, three hours. You're gonna have referrals everywhere. You're never gonna do anything. What can they expect? And how is your program kind of structured? Take the listeners and everybody through. Hey, how this program is structured and and how you take someone through the process because I think that's important as well. Yeah, it's always interesting. I always tell folks, you can understand pretty much everything you need to understand in half a day when it comes to referrals. This is not complicated. I am not teaching rocket science type stuff here, right? Yeah. I mean, this is all about 
figuring out who you need to have better relationships with and then how to take care of them. That is fundamentally the concept of my program. And so I tell other folks, I can teach you what you need to know in about a half a day. I mean, actually, when you go through my online program, it's like just under three hours of viewing time to like watch all the videos. I mean, there's okay. work to do with it. So it takes yeah. a little bit longer. But the truth is you can learn the things you need to learn in just a couple of hours. But we both know it only works when you put it into execution. Right. Right. And so that's where it is a long term mentality I want people to have. Yes, I expect you to go through my program and I expect you to hit a goal that we set based on historical data for you in terms of number of referrals received. We set a goal. If you follow this process and plan, where do you want to get? And whether that's taking you from four referrals a year on average to 12 referrals a year or 20 referrals a year or taking you from on average 40 referrals a year and getting you 115. Right. Those are actual numbers from some of the the um, business owners and sales professionals in my program. Right. But whatever it looks like, there is work to be done between where you are now and where you're going. The big pieces that you have to have and how my program walks people through this process is number one, we make sure that you actually know who your referral sources are. And you would be surprised how many people think they know that. And then when I put them through an exercise of actually uncovering that data in their business, they're like, oh my gosh, I thought I knew and I had no idea who's actually referring me because we remember, we remember what happened recently or yeah. anecdotal evidence, not the actual data evidence. So when I make them pull it out of their business, they're like, Ooh, I mean that exercise alone, most people are like that exercise alone taught me so much about my business. Like where do my prospects come from? Right. Yeah. Taught you so much about that book of business of like, Hey, this is actually where my clients come from, not where I thought they came from. And so we have to identify who our referral sources are. I had one person who went through um, the program just recently thought they had 91 referral sources. When we were done with the process, they had 36. Wow. Because people, yeah, because people think people are referral sources or they think they'll continue to refer them. But when we put them through the process, they have to get really like serious and really like paying attention to who these people are. So first we identify your referral sources. Second, and that's probably the least sexy thing we do. I'll be honest with you, right? Like yeah. getting through the data is never really fun, but it is so eye-opening. People love right. it when they're done, when they're on the other side of it, they oh, love yeah. it. Doing it, not so much, but on the other side of it, they love it. Then we have to do one very basic thing. We have to create a plan of how we are going to take care of those referral sources we've just identified. We have to take care of them in a way that allows us to be memorable and meaningful and to stay top of mind which those planned outreaches that are memorable and meaningful that let us stay top of mind are opportunities to deliver specific language, which is what I call referral seeds. And so what I'm not talking about is you thinking putting, hey, the best compliment you can give me is a referral in your email signature. That's marketing and promotions, right? right. It's also not thinking that you can buy everybody a set of Cutco knives and boom, they're gonna start referring you like crazy. Yeah. That's not how it works either. Yeah. This is about building a relationship through these, through this outreach so that people know, oh my God, John actually cares. And he's thankful for the fact that he, that I refer to him. And that is what endears me to you. That keeps that process going. And then when we use the right language, the referral seed language, we are subconsciously getting them to think about us from a referral perspective. And we're doing it in a way that honors who we are and honors who they are and stays, you know, protects that relationship first and foremost. And then once you know who your referral sources are, you have your referral plan built out and you know the language you're gonna use, we just need to put it into a system or a process, whether that's putting it on your calendar so you remember to do those outreaches or it's, you know, using your, some type of client management software system Great, we can do that way, or project management, online system, whatever it is. It's just taking what we've built and then making sure you execute on it. Because yeah. failure to execute means nothing actually happens. And here's what I tell folks. You should not be reaching out to your referral sources every day or every week. And in the way I teach it, you don't even have to reach it out every month. When we're looking somewhere between four and eight touch points or outreaches a year, most people have to fall in the six to eight range from those outreaches because that's the cadence that we're looking for. And in that case, the way we do it, there's some very specific things that we do, but most of these plans are built. I always tell folks, there's like four things I'm gonna tell you you have to do. And then the other touch points you're gonna do are gonna be really specific to making sure you're connecting to who your referral sources are, not what's easy for you. You're not gonna send out a koozie with your logo on it. That yeah. is not about your referral source, right? And yeah. you don't even have to do gifts. Like there's so many things that you can do and people, they think so like, like laser focused on this, that when I'm like, no, you could do this or this or this, they're like, yeah. oh, anybody could do this on any type of budget. 
I'm like, yes, because it's not all about the things that you think people are looking for. What they're ultimately looking for is for you to thank and acknowledge that they do refer you. And they don't even sometimes know that's what they ultimately want. They just know they love it when you do it. And so that's the system that we built. It is not rocket science. It is about being a good human. It's about taking care of the people who take care of you. But the secret sauce piece always comes down to the language we use when we're taking care of our referral sources. And that allows our existing referral sources to refer us more. Now, of course, there's another process that we learn if we wanna turn clients and contacts into referral sources. That's a different process we learn. If you go through the process and you're like, wow, I need more referral sources. I only have five yeah. and I need 15 or 35 or whatever it is. There's a process that I teach about how to turn people into referral sources. But ultimately the overall system and process that I teach is once you have someone referring you, here's how we wanna go about hope, working to keep them referring you. So most of the companies that you work with and over the years, you've been doing this a long time. What do they say to you? Uh, like, uh, do they call you and say, Hey, we're just not getting enough referrals or do they not know how to get a referral or is it a combination of that? And I'm sure you, you're probably thinking, okay, I know right off the bat when you go into these organizations, what are the top things that you kind of know right off the bat that you're going to see that they're going to need to work on right away? Yeah, most of the time when people are, have told me, they're like, okay, I think I need to focus on referrals. I think it needs to be a strategy that I'm going to focus on. I know some of the things that they're, going to, that they're going to run into. A big one will always be they don't have enough people referring them. Okay. Right? I mean, just as if you want 50 referrals and you have five people referring you, it's not possible. Right right? It's just not possible. Most people only refer you once or twice a year. Yes, you'll have people on your list who refer you double digits per year, but those referral sources are really rare. Yeah. And so a lot of times it's like they think that they should be getting more referrals, but they actually have no idea how many people are referring them, which means they have no idea they have a gap. And the gap is you don't have enough people referring you. You need to create more referral sources. You need to cultivate more referring relationships. Yeah. So that's a big one. Um, another one that I always will have conversations with folks about when they are deciding to get serious about referral sources or referrals is that them also understanding that this isn't about them. It's about your referral sources. So it isn't about doing the things that are easy for you to do, right? This isn't about sending everybody a pen and being like, thanks, right? For being a referral source. Like it is about realizing that these are individual people. Now what I teach we create something that can be done to all of our referral sources at one time just for ease of process, but it will feel when your referral source receives it, it'll feel individualized to them based on what we're doing and the language that we use when we're doing it. But the consistency factor is always a big one with folks. It's yeah. like, hey, this isn't a one hit wonder. This is not a silver bullet. You can't do one thing once and be like, whoa, I'm done. Like, this was great. Thanks so much, right? Yeah. Like that's not, it's that consistency. So like, it's someone like Amanda who's in my program and she just built her referral plan for 2021, which is the seventh year in a row she has built a referral plan. And wow. she started with me with six or seven referrals. And in her first year, we were able to double that to 12. And her second year, we got that to 27, I think it was. And her third year, she got it to 30 referrals. And now for the last couple of years, I think year four, five, and six, she's received 40 or 40 referrals every year since. And the yeah. truth is, she can only handle about a dozen referrals. Oh, wow. But now she's getting 40. And she can consistently know where her clients are coming from. She knows who's going to give them to her. She has this process, this system built. That is true freedom and knowing yeah. where your business is coming for the year. And for her, it also allows her to be really choosy and picky about who she is going to do business with. Yeah. And she doesn't have to take everybody because she's worried she won't, you know, have, have a new client for the next month. And so from her perspective, like that has helped create true sustainability in her business. Um, but it's, it's, that's ultimately what I'm looking for. This isn't about how many referrals can I get this month or how many right. referrals, if I do this, how many referrals can I get this year? Yeah, that's a great question. I'm more concerned is can I build sustainability in your business moving forward? Like I want people to have more of the longer range ver vision of what their business can look like, what that version of their business will look like if they could just do a little bit long range vision about ultimately what this looks like. And yeah. so a lot of times people, like they don't know, they, they don't realize they don't have enough people referring them. They have people referring them that they pay zero attention to. That's always embarrassing when people are like, oh my yeah. gosh, this person refers me every year and I haven't talked to them in nine months, right? They're like, that's embarrassing. <laughs> and so there are definitely some moments that we have when we go through this. And then when people realize 
what we're going to do is going to take care of people. They're like, oh my God, so much more fun than making 40 phone calls, making 40 cold call dials for the day. Yeah. So tell all the listeners, because really your story is unique in itself, but, and, and your website has a lot of great testimonials and people that do uh, have gone through the program. And, and it just seems that, man, having your pipeline being filled with these referrals seems so much more stress-free than like you talked about the hustle and the bustle. And we've all done that, but tell all the listeners, where can they get this book and what's the best place to get a hold of you so that they can start and, and, and the, let's look at joining this program. You've got the online version. I know you speak nationally as well, but what's the best place to get in, in touch with Stacy and to get the book? Yeah, and you're right. The Growth by Referrals program, um, there is an online version and there is a VIP option where you get to work with me for a year in addition to the online. So it depends okay. on how people like to work. If yeah. they want to do it with me, they can. Or if they want to do it online, they have that option as well. But, okay. you know, the book is called Generating Business Referrals Without Asking. It is available wherever books are sold online or at your favorite local bookstore. Um, so you can get the book wherever. I always say that's a great place to start because you're going to understand the overall process and philosophy behind the growth by referrals system. Okay. And then from there, of course, the process is there. But and then my, you know, my website is great if you want to find all this information out, stacybrownrandall.com. Stacy does have an E. But here's where I okay. actually tell people to start. Yes, get the book. That would be great. Yes, check out the program. That'd be great. But the very best place to start is to actually take a nine question quiz that we have at referralquiz.com where you can actually go into my website and just go to referralquiz.com and it's going to allow you to answer these nine questions and then it's going to tell you what level of a referral ninja you are. Are you a master? Are you a beginner? Or are you somewhere in between? By okay. answering these nine questions about how you run your business from a referral perspective, it'll give you a level. And if you're below a master, right? So and definitely if you're at the beginner level, it'll give you a roadmap to show you how to close your gaps. And that's the best place to start because then you can see, hey, this may be the work I've got to do to get to become a referral ninja master, to get those referrals like Stacy talked about. And then you can decide for yourself, yeah, I want to learn more, or maybe I don't want to work that hard and I'll just go back and make 40 more dials today. Yeah. Whatever works for you, that <laughs> quiz is the best place to start. So okay. I, would, I would encourage everyone to start there. Okay. All right. All you listeners, get to that website. Uh, get the book uh, because uh, it's really, really good. I mean, I think referrals is such a it's not something that is even in all the sales training I've gone through. It's kind of, it's taught, but it's not taught in depth and it's kind of glossed over. Yeah. Go ask for a referral or get a, a, a written letter. So one more question for you. And, and I ask all the guests on uh, that attend. So I'll put you on the spot here a little bit, but you got one sales vitamin to give today. You got one sales re referral piece of advice. What do you want to leave the listeners with, with that one sales, uh, we'll call it a sales referral vitamin for today's episode. What would you tell them? Number one is to understand and know without a shadow of a doubt who has referred you in the past. And chapter eight of my book is going to walk you through exactly how to get to that answer. You need to know who your referral sources are. It informs all decisions you'll make moving forward of either you need more or how to take care of them or even who they are and who have you been ignoring. So number one thing I would say, if you do nothing else, go through chapter eight in my book and identify exactly who your referral sources are by the right definition and understanding who they are. Get that information because trust me, when you see that data, you're going to know you'll instinctively. I think a lot of people just know I got to do something about this. Right. And then you'll know who you're doing it for. And that's a really powerful place to start. Okay, great. So start there first, go get the book, run to your computer right now, go online, get it <laughs> or go to the bookstore, wherever you want to get it. And then go to chapter eight and, uh, you're going to see uh, big results just from that. So Stacy, it's been awesome having you on You're uh, we could talk all day. I could literally talk about this, but, uh, I appreciate your time and uh, appreciate uh, you coming on and just talking about this. And I can't wait for the listeners to, uh, to hear this. I think this information is fantastic. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share it with you and your listeners. You bet.